This is my Glock 43X. Weapons clear. So this Glock 43X is my first weapon I have ever owned. So I'm pretty much new to the gun world. So I may say some things that may be off or incorrect. Feel free to politely correct me in the comment section because I'm sure you will. In case you're wondering how new to the gun world I, I am, I bought this approximately two months ago. And since purchasing this, I've acquired four more handguns, which I'll show in later videos if anyone's interested. The reasons I chose this over other handguns was I've always liked the looks of Glocks. I know that's a terrible reason for choosing this. Choosing a gun specifically because of the looks is a bad reason, but I always liked how Glocks looked, but I never knew anything about handguns at all. I've shot many M4s and M16s, but that's about it. But I've never owned anything. When I went in to get this, my plan was to pick up a Gen 5 Glock 19 till I went in to the store in person and I saw this thing. The store clerk let me, you know, test it out, test drive it, and it felt great compared to the Glock 19. It felt really great. And for me, I plan on using this weapon for uh, conceal and carry and having a smaller frame, this works great. Although it still prints like right here, no matter what I do, it still prints right about here in this, uh, what I've learned is called the Glock hump, apparently. My likes and dislikes since owning this with this Glock, I love how slim it is. It's, it's so, it's really slim. Even though it's, it's, it's compact, it's a compact pistol, but I can still get three fingers on there. As you can see, it doesn't hang off like, um, I was considering a Glock 43 also, but the Glock 43 is a lot shorter. The pistol grip's way shorter, which is great for concealment, but I don't have a full purchase on the pistol grip. It's a 10 round capacity compared to the six rounds in the 43. I also like that it's single stack. Apparently, most gun heads aren't fans of single stack. I don't know why it's a bad thing, but for me, it's great. Like I said, small frame. It's hard for me to conceal something like a Glock 19. So this works great for me. I like the simplistic design, the slide. It's, it literally looks like a block, which I love the look of this. It's not um, over stylized. It has um, the front and rear serrations, which is all it needs. I like that, it looks cool. It looks really cool. And even the serrations are really basic. They're not over stylized. It doesn't tilt forward, tilt back, any crazy cuts and grooves and there's nothing on here. Just vertical serrations, that's it. So another thing I really like are these sights. Everyone complains about these Glock sights because they're plastic. Oh my God, the plastic Glock sights. Um, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. It does what I need it to do. And these U sights, every review I've watched, everyone complains about the Glock U sights because they're so horrible. When, let me see if I can get this in the shot for you guys. This works great for me. White dot stops with the white U. I can line it up really easy. Glock did this for a reason and it works really well. There's nothing wrong with these sights. Things I'm not a huge fan of. I don't like that there's no um, physical, manual, external safety. I'm well aware of this little ridiculous thing right here, that it won't shoot unless I get it. That works great, I, whatever. But if something was to accidentally, for some reason, something got caught in here, it's going to pull on the safety end. You know, this is not a real safety to me, it's not. It's no matter how you try to argue it, no matter how you try to spin it, this is not a safety mechanism. I much rather have an external safety. But because of this, when I do start carrying concealed, I'm not gonna carry chambered. There's no way I'm carrying chambered with this. Thing. No, it's just not gonna happen. This takedown lever, is a joke. This is really difficult to do. I recently tried it on the uh, PSA dagger, which we all know is a Glock clone. So the cutouts around here, it goes a little wider and deeper and the takedown, the lever, 
sticks out just ever so slightly, but it's enough to where it's easier to use this. Not a huge fan of this Glock hump. I print no matter what. I, Appendix carry, side carry, it, it, it always prints. Like I said, small frame, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying. And I'm not a huge fan of that it's, it is only a 10 round magazine. I'm aware of the shield arms and all the other aftermarket manufacturers. However, I'm also following SIG that's slightly, slightly smaller in the pistol grip area. I believe you get two more with the SIG. And SIG accomplished this, accomplishes this without being a, like it's this small without being a single stack. SIG maintains approximately this size with more capacity while not being a single stack. That's, that's really cool. And Glock could have done that if they wanted to. They weren't being cheap, they could have done that. So like I said, I bought this gun two months ago. Uh, I've put in, I guess, approximately 500 rounds through it by now. Of course, I use the Blazer. The Blazer 115 grain because it's the cheapest right now. But for my home defense stuff, I got these hollows. Uh, focus, yeah. For home defense, I prefer the hollows, of course. So I can really fuck some shit up if I need to, I guess. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> Another con for me, it only comes with two mags. What is that? Uh, three would be nice. Okay. Functionality. Like I said, I'm new to this, so I'm gonna be saying things that may be incorrect. Everyone complains about the Glock triggers. I, I get it, I understand. I, I, after shooting a few other pistols against the Glock, the, uh, the take up on this, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, man, but however, as shitty as this is right here, once you get past that, like say you're shooting, once you get past that, and you reset, click after the reset. This is a great, great trigger. I don't care what anyone says. After the reset, you're all good to go. The only thing that sucks with the trigger is the first initial take up. Watch. Break. This is nice. This is really nice. Uh, I guess I'm gonna try, well, I'm gonna attempt to take this apart on camera and not embarrass myself. Oh shoot, this actually worked well this time see how simple that was if you're in if you were a brand new gun owner and you're considering gun ownership this is how simple it is to take it apart i should have explained what i just did as i did it huh i'm gonna put this back on okay you're a brand new glock owner you want to take it apart squeeze the trigger slightly pull the slide back to release the pressure off of the takedown lever. Pull takedown lever down and slide forward. Ta-da, release everything. You're done. You just took it apart. Frame, slide. On the inside, ta-da, you got the recoil spring and you've got the barrel, which comes out like so. Ta da! I don't know which angle is better for you. This angle, that angle. Barrel comes out like so. This is as far as I take it down. This is called field stripping. I'm, I'm learning the lingo of these gun guys. But yeah, apparently this is called field stripping. This is as far as you'll want to take it down to clean. There, apparently, from what I'm told, it is unnecessary to take apart everything that is within here, within the slide. The firing pin and whatever springs are in here but i've seen it i've seen it done plate comes off witchcraft and magic happens i'm not gonna mess with this oh i should have mentioned this glock 43 is also the uh, mos model which it's already cut for optics which i may do in the future i have the choice to do so i just need to do my research to verify if it's a rmr or a doctor cutter all new things i am learning and to reassemble, it's pretty much the same process in reverse. Put the barrel in, like so. Recoil spring. This piece goes to the front. This piece goes to the back. And you'll notice on the back, so on the back, you see how there's like a step? 
right here, this part of the spring is going to sit right there. So it's going to sit like that. A lot of people will explain this, but they don't highlight it very well. See how that's grooved and kind of rounded? So this is going to sit right in here, like so. That's where you want that, okay? So, barrel back into the slide. The spring also slide. Oop, there we go. Perfect, perfect. Slide onto the frame, like so. It resets, click. Functions check, click. It works, ta-da, and that's all there is to it. And uh, yeah, that's my first pistol, ladies and gentlemen, my first weapon ever. It's a little dirty, because I use it. I actually do take it out to the range, get some practice in. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I've never been a huge gun guy, so if you're interested in the story of why the sudden change, comment below. Let me know if you're interested, and I will tell that story. Yeah, second amendment for the win. Peace.